Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Talking about where birds disappear to. I get this question I have for 40 years. It, 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 you know, fall and winter, where do my birds go? Where do, I know they migrate, but where, Mark, where do, where do they go? The birds that we see in our backyards in our area during the nesting season, uh, I know they go mostly south, uh, but where do they go to? Well, it's a really, really hard question to answer because one, so many different birds and of course there's a lot of habitat uh, between here and the southern tip of south america but you're right you know uh, for the most part you have a southward movement and it really depends on the birds needs and where they can get to remember my rule of uh, the least amount of work for the most amount of gain um, it, it holds true most of the time, but you're going to see some examples here of that not holding true uh, and, and many that do. So uh, let's start with uh, birds that feed in the water. You know, that's uh, I know everybody loves the common loon, especially you guys up there in the northern tier states and and up in Canada they, up there. They love hearing them call and uh, they're wonderful, but they can't live up there during the cold weather months when the water freezes over. So they have to go where there's open water. And traditionally, you know, they have migrated and they still do migrate mainly to the, the coastal areas um, in the Atlantic coast and the, and the Gulf of Mexico coast states. Uh, but they take their time. You know, they come to, we have them here in the Kansas City area uh, for a good while in both spring and in fall as they move through. And sometimes we have 30, 40, 50 out on Smithville Lake, which is right here in the city. So in migration. So and they're, they have to have open water and they're deep divers. They have to have deep water. So you got a combination of things that restrict them. Now, other waterfowl like swans and geese and ducks, again, they have to leave for those far northern reaches because they have to have open water. But a lot of those are puddle ducks, as we call them, or dabblers, in which they feed in shallow water, feeding on vegetation and things. And shallow water tends to freeze quicker than... Uh, than deep water. So while the the common loons can take their time and, and take advantage of open water uh, as they go south, a lot of the dabbling ducks, they have they take off in the fall and they just go on and get to where they're going. You know, a lot of those ducks, uh, we have several that winter here in the Kansas City, but a lot of them they do in the south. They, they winter down uh, like redhead ducks. It's like the, the bulk of the world's population uh, winters in the southern coastal estuaries of Texas. And so that, you know, they're go, they go to where they know they can get their food that they need to survive the winter months. Now, when you, you, you're not going any further than you have to, I said, we would, we would definitely break that rule here. This is the American golden plover. And I know it's not a backyard bird and I know he's not very common to a lot of you, but you, if you see on the map here, and believe me, all these, uh, these wet maps are from the Cornell lab of ornithology a group. I respect immensely. The, the American golden plover nest at the top of the world, as you can see by that orange on the map and they migrate the yellow on the map all the way down to Argentina. So almost to the tip of South America. And that is a long journey. So that is going further than they uh, you, you would think they would need to. They they stop at uh, places, you know, but they make that journey. Uh, it's amazing. They, they, they fly and they've, uh, they've done it, of course, for millennia. So they, uh, they go south. So they go down to the grasslands of, and wetlands of the, uh, down there in southern South America. So that is a really long journey. That's, that's an example of a long uh, migrator there. Now, more birds that we're more common, uh, familiar with in our backyards, you know, hummingbirds, uh, tanagers, uh, orioles, the thrushes, those guys, well, they mainly depend on insects and fruit and nectar. And so they have to go to where that's going to be available to them all winter. And there's hardly anywhere in North America that that is true. Now, down along, you know, uh, the, the Gulf Coast areas and Florida and maybe that area, they can find uh, uh, much of that. But there's not a ton of that. And deep, cold weather can reach that far south, which is very risky for those birds that need a dependable source. So a lot of birds go very so far south. The Anna's hummingbird, which is a West Coast hummingbird, is a very, is an example of one that doesn't go any further than it has to. It, it migrates down into 
and out of, uh, you know, upper elevations, if they're nesting there, they move down, but also into that Southern California, Northern, Northwest Mexico region, they don't go any further than that versus our ruby-throated hummingbird here in the East who goes down to the tropics. They, you know, the Yucatan Peninsula, Belize and, and countries like that. Uh, and they are, uh, they know that all winter they're going to have their food source. They don't have to worry about uh, the cold stretches reaching the Gulf Coast and into, into Florida. And so they fly all the way down there and they spend the winters and they make their way back up. Uh, another bird uh, that again, is very much a fruit eater and an insect eater, uh, the scarlet tanagers. And, and again, this is a good example of Orioles and, and uh, other birds. And remember, I don't know if you remember my program, but uh, just a little while back, I talked about the most important thing you can do for bird was to drink shade-grown coffee. Uh, well, this is an example of a bird that benefits, and you can see where they winter down there in northern South America, stretching down into South America, and those shade-grown coffee plants plantations provide important habitat uh, for them down there. And this is a picture I've used from, of a, uh, they plant the coffee uh, trees in, coffee bushes in the, in the forest. So they don't cut down the rainforest to grow the coffee. Uh, it's very important. But that area is where a lot of the birds that we love the most, uh, the Orioles and the Tanagers and those guys, spend their winter. Many of the warblers do. Now, one warbler that is an exception to that, uh, we call him the, the myrtle warbler, but they are officially known as the yellow rump warbler here in the east. Now, you guys out west are called Audubon's warbler, but they these birds don't go all the way, often all the way down to the tropics. Many of these birds winter uh, in the Atlantic uh, coastal areas uh, and, and Florida and the, and the Gulf Coast states, and they settle into wax myrtle groves along the coast where they grow prolifically, and they feed in there. They can feed on the wax myrtle uh, berries, but they also uh, can feed, they, I, I'm telling you, growing up there, I know in February you can get um, stung by mosquitoes out there on the uh, the outer banks and on the those coastal areas where they winter. So they are getting some insects, but they also can subsidize on those uh, wax myrtle berries, which a lot of birds will, will subsidize on berries when they have to, but they much prefer the insects and things. So that's why they go much further down into the tropics. And uh, there's another type of uh, migration and where the birds disappear to, and that's called altitudinal uh, migration. So like and birds like that, the mountain bluebird, which nests up really high in elevations, they just move down the mountains in the, uh, in the fall and winter. Uh, and they move out into the, a lot of times into the plains. And this in the fall and winters when we have a chance of seeing a mountain bluebird in, in Kansas City region in Missouri. Uh, but in Western Kansas and in the plain states like that, these birds move down, you know, because the weather's so harsh up in the upper elevation. So this is the type of migration. But they, they don't go down into the tropics. They just go, they get pushed down into the plains and lower elevation in the canyons, things like that. So they, they may not be very far from you. you. If you have one, I know a friend has a place up in Montana and they see them, but I bet they be, they don't go very far from his place in the winter months when it's, it's covered in snow. They just go to where they can find, uh, you know, insects and seeds and things that they, they will subsidize on. Um, let's see. And I thought I would put one what I consider one of the champion migrators in here. You know, a lot, we know a lot of hawks, uh, raptors move out of the north uh, and move down into our area in the winter. Things, you know, the red tail hawks and rough legged hawks and things like that. But the Swainson's hawk, which is I, I, one of my nicknames for it, is the fence post hawk. Out in the flat countries of uh, western Kansas and Colorado and west, uh, they leave in mass numbers and sh huge migrations of these uh, huge numbers of Swainson's hawks migrating. And they go all the way down to the pampas grass regions of Argentina. They they do go almost all the way down to the southern tip as well. I know there's a famous case. They, they were using chemicals down there that were killing them many years ago. And conservation groups worked with and educated the groups down there. And they uh, outlawed a lot of those chemicals that were used and that were killing the grasshoppers. And that's what these birds were eating in the winter, or grasshoppers, and they were killing the swains and socks. But that was a, a, a conservation success story that uh, is a good example of we can protect them here, but we also have to help protect them on their wintering ground. So the Swainson's hawk is a, a major migrator. It goes a long way uh, down there to, uh, to South America uh, to spend this winter. So uh, 
that's I hope that kind of helps. Uh, you know, I can't tell you every 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 bird wherever they winter, but know that they just have to go to where they can survive. And the great source, right, I told you those maps are from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. Um, that that is a, a great source if you're looking up if you want to know where a bird in particular goes to. They're a great source uh, on the internet to to see their maps and where they go to. Uh, and that's where I got those maps, and we thank them for that. So. Great idea for a program. If you liked it, please uh, give us a like and a share. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Uh, the, the channel is growing and we know it's because of you. And we really thank you. So until next time, come by. Let's talk birds.